Hi, I'm Trevor Conkergood. Welcome to this week's RNK Software Club's video of the week. And the topic for this week is about tie-ins and tie-offs and thread trims. And when do they happen? And how do you know that they're happening? And is it okay to trim the thread or not? And so this is what we're going to learn about. I'm going to select this piece of artwork and just apply a standard embroidery fill. Now, by default, I know that the software is set up to always put in a tie-in at the beginning of the embroidery and a tie-off at the end known as lock stitches. And so if you watch it start sewing um, right here at the beginning where it started sewing, there will be something known as a tie-in. And so if you zoom in really closely on that spot, you can actually see it. If you rewind right to the beginning of the design and watch it sew out, it'll start with a one, two, three, four, before carrying on with whatever underlay, you know, and fill stitches that are getting created, that's called the tie in. And similarly, at the end of the bear, wherever the finishing spot of the embroidery is, there will be a tie off. And again, one, two, three, four stitches that will lock the embroidery. And that way, you know that even if you're making multiple bears, um, that it's okay to trim the thread in between your bears. Um, that it won't unravel. Now, people often ask about, you know, why does my machine sometimes not thread trim in between the two bears? And generally speaking, that will be determined by your embroidery machine because not all embroidery machines are activating their thread trims in the same way. If you have an industrial uh, embroidery machine, there are something known as trim commands, which the software can put in the design um, and ensure that there is a trim. As I showed you in the commands tab, you could put in here that you wanted a trim. Um, however, if most home embroidery machines don't uh, use the trim command method and instead they activate their trims based upon the distance from the last stitch to the next stitch. And so in this case, it's the dotted line, right? You can see that it finishes on his foot and remember it starts up here somewhere near his ear. And so however long that jump is, and most sewing machines will have a setting that you can make that, um, you know, jump distance longer or shorter to try and make your machine trim more often or not. Um, generally speaking, if it's a nice long distance in between, they always trim. But what happens if you make the first bear and um, its finishing point is kind of over here and then the second bear has a starting point which is similar and so there's not a lot of distance in between. You know, in this case, there's almost no distance in between. Um, and so one of the questions, you know, that you, so you can rest assured that the software will always put in a tie off at the end of one embroidery and a tie in as long as it's turned on in the commands tab. Now, notice in the commands tab where you have an option for tie in and tie off. There's three choices, basic triangle and none. Now, um, basic and triangle are two different kinds of tie-ins. So basic kind of goes linearly. Um, triangle kind of goes more. Uh, let's So we're let's do the tie-in for this one as a triangle and then click up, um, apply. And you'll notice right here where it starts that there's now a small triangle for the tie-in. It's a very small, you won't actually see the triangle. It's just very small, but it's two different ways of applying the lock stitch. And so you have the choice between your basic lock stitches or your triangular lock stitches, or the third option was to say no tie-in. Now, why would you want to have no tie-in here uh, in, if, unless you are not intending to trim that thread at all? And that's kind of what happens is sometimes our embroidery is so close together that we're not going to trim it. And so that's that is a time when you may want to turn it off. Um, the cool thing is you do have the ability to control that. I guess turn it on, turn it off. By default, they're always going to be turned on. But you know me, I love to make those beautiful thread sketch designs. And when I make a lot of run stitches, I always connect them all together. And so what the software can do is it can actually decide when they're needed and turn them on and turn them off. And so, for example, in this design, let's do this. Let's take these two bears let's go ahead and turn them both to have no tie on tie in or tie off um, or you could do the opposite and say put them both on or off but we'll leave it off and so 
notice the button right here that says auto lock stitches. Now it's turned on. It's not going to affect the embroidery design until we save it. So auto lock stitches being turned on says when you save my design, check it and then let the software decide if there should be a tie in and a tie off. And so, um, for example, if we click on file and save as and just call this design you know, whatever name on my desktop, design one is fine. And then we close it. And now if I open it back up, still on my desktop, I want you to notice that if I look at those two bears, and so let's select the first bear and check its commands, notice that its tie-in is set to basic, but its tie-off is set to none. And if I check the second bear out and his commands, the tie-in is set to none, but the tie-off is set to basic. That's because the distance from the end of the first bear to the end of the second bear was shorter than the distance that activates the, the software. And it's current, that was three and a half millimeters apart. And so the software said, you don't need to trim that thread, Trevor. You can leave it in and we won't tie it off. And so that's what happens when you have this button. If you want to know the, what the number is that gets it to activate, it's five millimeters. Anything shorter than five millimeters and the software will not um, insert, will actually remove the, the basic commands. Um, however, if it's longer than five, so if these two bears have got more than five, and if I just do a little measure to be sure, between the bear and the other bear is now 15 millimeters apart. And if we click on, even just click save, same name, same place, design one, close it. All right, open it up again. Let's just see if that made any changes. And so um, we'll select the first bear and check its commands tab and notice that it's now basic on both sides. So just know that if you're like me and you like to do a lot of digitizing, maybe you're making designs with run stitches, you've made a lot of run stitches that all connect to each other, the software, if you have this button turned on, can decide whether or not those stitches are needed. If you're making run stitches, sometimes those extra stitches are too many extra stitches and they're just not needed and so we like to have them left off. And that's how, you know, so just, Bear in mind that the software will normally always include a basic tie-in on both the beginning uh, tie-in and tie-off for most shapes. Now, this question often comes up with lettering. You know, people want to know why doesn't the machine trim in between all of the letters of our embroidery? And so we create, you know, an embroidery element that says my text. Maybe I'll just, to make this easy on myself, I'll I'll get rid of the bears uh, now and just leave the words my text. And so will the software trim between the letters? Probably not because the distance between those two letters is so small, it's not going to activate the trim on most people's embroidery machines. Now, um, do you want it to trim that thread is another entire question that we often ask, which because um, my thinking is, if the distance between the two letters is smaller than the column width of the letters, you probably won't even notice that thread and it should be left in. And as you know, we can always use our right click and edit text mode to control the amount of space between two letters. And so if you, um, you know, make them essentially touching each other, you don't need the tie off at the end of the E and the tie in at the beginning of the X. And so um, in that case, the machine is not going to trim. It may trim between the words my and the word text, but again, it that is also going to be determined on the distance of this jump and the setting on your machine. There are some tricks that we can learn to get those things to trim. Now, um, like I said, usually what I do is make the connections close enough and leave them in, but you're not going to want them in between the words. Um, now, first of all, when I select my lettering, you might notice that there's no commands tab. And so when we deal with text, commands are actually found in the text extra tab. And so when you look on text extra, you've got options for things like what sewing sequence will it sew from the left to the right or from the right to the left or from the center out. Um, that's what that's for. But notice here you have a trim type and a lock type. 
So the trim type, that's your tie-ins or that's your whether or not the machine will trim. And so you can tell it, I never want you to trim. I always want you to put in the trim coats or automatically let the software decide. And if I say automatically, then it will be based around a trim. So you can say automatically um, trim around automatically lock if there's going to be a trim is I'm sorry what I'm trying to say so the lock type can be either always never or only if there's going to be a trim and so if you let the software decide where there should be a trim and then put in the locks that kind of makes a lot of sense um, that said if you leave these to just always and always then the software is going to always try and put in those tie-ins and those tie-offs and those lock stitches now um, notice here at the beginning or at the last option is called connection type so it's set to closest and the idea is it will actually find the closest connection between each letter and just notice i'm going to click on edit text and i'm going to move that letter x down to like uh let's say there and notice that the software will automatically find the closest place to join those two letters and so the setting on the software in the uh, properties tab for text extra is set to closest there's also furthest so if you choose furthest and a click apply now what we'll do every letter finishing the m here and starting the y in the furthest distance finishing the y and starting the t in the furthest distance that may be just enough to get your embroidery machine to activate those thread trims that you're wanting um there's another way that you could get your machine to trim in between each letter. Um, and that would be in also on the text extra would be to choose auto color characters. Now, when I choose auto color characters, it puts a color stop for every single character. So it'll do the M stop trim, do the Y stop trim, do the T stop trim. And so that's another way that you can force the trims between your letters. But coming back to the beginning with the letters, um, for myself, generally speaking, I like my letters set at closest join. I'll leave these set as always and always. And then I will go through and try to make the letters as close as I can to avoid the need for that to be a trim at all. And so again, I just use my right click, go into edit text mode, and then if you bring it so that each letter is a close point in between, you'll never need to trim that out. And therefore, um, you can actually um, not trim those threads. So, okay, that's some information about tie-ins and tie-offs and trims and when your machine will trim. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Hope it didn't leave you feeling a little bit confused. Um, if you do, send us a letter. Let us know your questions. Until then, have a great day. Thanks very much for listening. And don't send us a letter. Start a support ticket. That is the best way to ask us for help, by the way, you guys. Um, we are always happy to help you guys. Have a great day. Thanks again, and bye for now.